Los Angeles in just one day. I know it sounds pretty nutty, but if you've only got a morning, an afternoon, and an evening, well, I can show you the top spots and the top shots, how to get them, when to get them, and where to get them. And if you do have more time, Photo Walk Part 2 in two days. Meanwhile, let's take a deep breath. So buckle up, let's get going. Remember that the Photo Walk series is about taking you to great places and having them come alive through photos and videos. My goal is to show you where to get the best shots and when and how to take them. I designed today's Photo Walk geographically. You landed near the beach on the west side, so let's continue down the road. So our first stop, the energetic street scene that is Venice Beach. This is a street photographer's paradise. You go on to pick up street photography, people photography, performers, beach stuff, local icons, you name it. Take a quick look at five definitive shots of Venice Beach. Overhead shots, some of the drone enthusiast sites say that it's legal to fly a drone right here in Venice Beach, even though it's four miles from LAX, and the rule is that you can fly only if you're more than five miles from an airport. However, check this out. The best spot for an overhead shot of Venice Beach is the Hotel Irwin. It's right off Oceanfront Walk. It has a great seven-story rooftop bar and restaurant. And while up there, you will no doubt see the beach, the pier, and some of those creative murals down on the ground that perhaps flew right by you. Venice was founded in 1905 by the tobacco king Abbott Kinney. His idea was to recreate Venice, Italy by the Pacific, hence all those canals and bridges. The street named Abbott Kinney is the Tony part of Venice with high-end stores and cafes and a whole different kind of vibe than Venice Beach. Santa Monica is just up the road. It's 2.7 miles away. You can either take a cab, take a lift, take an Uber, or you can take a drive, which we're gonna do. Are you ready, everyone? Let's get going. So your Santa Monica shots has got to begin with the entrance to the iconic Santa Monica Pier. It doesn't get any more iconic than that. Then come down to the pier, Pacific Park for games, people photography, beach scenes, the last stop of Route Let's go check it out. So this is the Rodeo Drive shopping district in Beverly Hills. It's a lot of fun to walk around. It may not be your top spot for photos unless you like really expensive stuff in these stores. Maybe a selfie or two. When I think Beverly Hills, I think fancy cars. I think those old iconic hotels and of course those giant palm trees. Beverly Hills is known as the City of Stars, which it once was back in the golden era of Hollywood. But you're more likely to now see a famous movie location, as in a hotel, than you are to see a movie star walking down the street.
One obstacle you're going to find when trying to photograph an iconic Beverly Hills location is trees and other things that will get in the way. So if you see my shot of the Beverly Hills Hotel, there's a palm tree in the way. Well, it could have been worse. I kept moving and moving and moving until I got it right. See? Get a selfie of yourself in front of the Beverly Hills Hotel marquee. You got one right in front, no obstacles. This one's got the palm tree. Just keep on moving and get the camera low to get yourself with the words back there without the palm tree in the shot. Now let's talk palm trees and how to photograph them. North Beverly Drive in between Santa Monica and Sunset is the best place to see a really wide street and giant palm trees. How to capture them on camera? Well, get low, get really low, get as low as you can get and also be as wide as you can get as well. The wider, the better. So now we're on Beverly and Sunset, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, straight down the Sunset Strip. Let's go see some stars. Now we're on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's dirty, it's seedy, it's really crowded, but you're gonna come anyway. And when you do, you're gonna take pictures of the stars on the ground, the famous Chinese theater, maybe get some people and performer shots, and you might wanna get the shot of the Hollywood sign, but you actually don't. Remember that when you pose with a costume character on Hollywood Boulevard, they expect to be tipped. What's the average? Um, there's really no average. It's just whatever they wanna give. Seems like to me that $5 would be a good one. Well, you know, I'll take that if you want to give it to me. That Hollywood sign is very elusive, and it sure ain't on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This is the official viewing spot of the Hollywood sign per the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. But as you can tell, you can barely see the sign. And in a selfie, you really can't see the sign. But I'd like to show you where you can see the sign. Hiking to get to the Hollywood sign is actually an all-day affair. So be sure to catch our episode on the Hollywood sign hike where we offer several great options. But as part of your LA in one day adventure, I can get you way closer to the Hollywood sign from the Griffith Observatory. Well, it took a lot of work to get up here, but we made it. The Griffith Observatory, which of course was immortalized in the films, Rebel Without a Cause and La La Land. This is where you'll get your best city views and your shot of the Hollywood sign. You can see it from here by the James Dean statue, but you'll need a long lens to capture it. Otherwise, get ready to hike. Head up to Mount Hollywood on the Charlie Turner Trailhead, which is also where you're going to get some of your best shots of the observatory. The city tells me that the observatory is the most visited tourist spot in Los Angeles, drawing even more people than the Hollywood Walk of Fame or Venice Beach, but do know that parking is really scarce. You'll probably have to hike up a hill to get up here or take public transportation, which will drop you right off. The shots you'll want up here are the city lights, which are best at night from any direction, shot on the decks of the observatory, some interiors, and the iconic building itself. You could do it right here in front with lots of people in the way, but you won't get the city lights glistening in the background. Many of the postcard images of Griffith Observatory will show you shots like this, but for those you need two things, a camera with a long zoom lens and the desire to hike up a big hill to look down at the observatory. That zoom will bring the buildings way closer to you. 
How to get there? Well, there's two ways to get about it. One, you could walk up this really high hill and hope to be high enough to bypass the shrubbery that gets in the way of your image, or you could walk around the bend to get a side view. That's how I got my best shot of the observatory. And you can forget about bringing your drone. Drone use in Griffith Park is illegal. For smartphone shots, just stand directly in front of the building to capture it and visit some of the decks for your night shots. This is a fabulous setting for a time lapse. Don't forget your tripod. Beyond the lush grounds and scenery, inside the observatory are opportunities to explore space through telescopes and the 290-seat planetarium. My favorite photo op is marveling at those wonderful murals painted in 1934 by Hugo Ballin of Celestial Mythology. Zoom in if you have a camera for a closer look. And let's all say thanks to Griffith J. Griffith the 19th century Los Angeles real estate tycoon who granted all that land to the city and people of LA to enjoy exploring. We did it, LA in one day. Got room for another one? If so, stay tuned and let's go to downtown Los Angeles, come on. I am sitting in what's arguably the top photo selfie spot in downtown Vista Hermosa Park. How about that view? In downtown LA, you'll start here at the park and continue to the museums, historic buildings, and rich food that distinguishes downtown, namely French dip, omelets, and authentic Mexican fare. Our stops today, we will drive to Vista Hermosa Park for that killer shot of the downtown skyline and then head back in the car and over to Disney Hall. From here, we've designed an easy two-mile photo walk from Disney Hall to Union Station. Now, if you don't feel like walking back, hop an Uber or a bus. Remember, by getting out of the car and using your camera eye, you will see so much more. Our stops, Disney Hall, the Broad Museum, Mocha, Historic Broadway, Grand Central Market, Angel's Flight, Stately City Hall, and the one and only Alvera Street and Union Station. For a bonus, you'll get back on wheels for a drive to Staples Center and LA Live, the Central Library, and the Sky Space Tower. Let's continue on to the Frank Geary masterpiece that is the hard to photograph Disney Hall. People love this building, it's so unique, it's only in LA, but it's very hard to capture because there's so many distractions, whether it be light poles, moving cars, the steps behind me. My best advice is actually to go to the side, stand right in front and get really wide. If you've got one of the newer phones like the Apple iPhone 11 Pro or the Samsung Galaxy S20, you've got an ultra wide angle and that really adds a lot. The tried and true solution is always the pano. Panoramic mode is on every smartphone and you get the entire enormity of a building. And I'd like you to watch how I'm doing it because you don't want to move your feet and shift your body with the white line. What you'll end up with is a merged photograph of several images and it looks great. But be sure to watch out for the horizon lines which can get distorted if you don't stick to the white line when you shoot. Also, moving objects are going to look weird, so steer clear of them. See what it did to this little car? Meanwhile, you can get an even cooler shot with a camera. Here, I merged 12 vertical still images into one using the Adobe Lightroom program. Beyond the exterior, have fun with the shapes that Frank Gehry created. Get in tight, go wide, and show the world how you interpret Disney Hall. Now in the hall itself, they have a strict no photography rule during the show. But if you're lucky, you just might be able to pull off some shots like I did by getting a seat behind the orchestra. Nighttime shots can be pretty magical. 
A great time to photograph Disney Hall would be just after sunset when the downtown building lights go on. From Disney Hall, you'll probably want to check out the two nearby museums and capture the essence of the buildings. The Broad is the more challenging of the two since it's an entire city block and it's impossible to fit within your camera lens. Again, go as wide as you can. So you can try to get the Broad right here, right across the street, but once again, that giant street lamp. And even if you move your butt and come out here and risk getting run over, you've still got it. But here's a good save. I like going to the crosswalk at the entrance to the Broad, and at least you get to see the enormity of the building. Another tip is to actually go inside and capture people looking at art and enjoying themselves, or just the expanse of the place. What makes this museum unique? Show it with your creativity. MOCA, the Museum of Contemporary Art, is across the street and it's an easier challenge. The big sculpture outside just screams art. Pick up a shot of someone looking at the sculpture and you're golden. Now let's go to Broadway and check out the old movie theaters, the Bradbury Building, the Grand Central Market, and then we'll have a flight up a funicular. For the movie theaters, just look at the workmanship you don't see anymore. Now a daytime shot of an old movie theater isn't worth much, so find something to zoom in on. How about the Bradbury Building? It's over a hundred years old. You may have seen the building in the original Blade Runner movie. As a tourist, you won't get any further than the first deck, and all you're left with is probably a wide shot of the building. It won't win you any awards. But it's right across the street from the theaters in the Grand Central Market, so you gotta go take a look. The Grand Central Market is also over 100 years old. It's a melting pot of Los Angeles with every type of food you could imagine. It's really more of an eating establishment than a market, although you could certainly buy fruit. Photo-wise, lighting is dark in here. I would just memorialize it with shots of tacos, pizza, cheese, or whatever strikes your fancy. Finish at the market by parting with a dollar and going back up the hill to your car on the Angels Flight Railway. You probably remember it from La La Land. Get a photo of the train itself and then once inside, switch to video mode for a great moving picture of the ride up. Now let's walk down the street and check out two great LA buildings, the Central Library and City Hall. If you watch TV in the 1950s, well, you know that City Hall is the place where Clark Kent changed into a Superman outfit while at the Daily Planet. Where's the best place to photograph City Hall? Well, you could try actually right in front in the courtyard with a wide angle and fit it into your camera frame. It's gonna be a little unusual. Or we could walk across the street and get a more level shot of the building. Right across the street, you can get the whole thing in here not even get the pedestrian crossing sign if you angle your phone the right way. Notice that if I come right over here, I got the stoplight in there, but move over here and I don't have it, which is cool. At the library, you could photograph rows of books or try for a wide shot of the room with historical murals. If you have a pro-level camera, zoom in on those amazing details. Now let's go from one historic building to my favorite in Los Angeles, Union Station. Union Station is the largest railroad passenger terminal in the West, built in the 1930s and a great example of Art Deco, blended with Spanish colonial and Mission Revival. Over 100,000 passengers come through here daily, en route to Seattle, Chicago, New Orleans, San Diego, and Santa Barbara.
The Union Station exterior is best at night when it's draped in purple, but for interiors, go for day when there's so much more light to work with. Take a look at this wedding portrait I did for a young couple here, where we took advantage of the dramatic lighting, the huge walls, and the overall setting that just screamed classic. Okay, so who's hungry? It's time to visit Philippe's, which is said to be where the French dip sandwich was invented in 1908. I'm starved, I can't wait, and I just want to beat this line. This is my favorite spot to get that master wide shot of the massive crowds at Philippe's. It's not a lot of fun to sit through, but it's a good picture. Other stops on your LA photo walk include the Last Bookstore, which offers one of the largest selections you'll find anywhere, Alvera Street, the oldest street in Los Angeles, and now a recreation of Old Mexico. Staples Center for a sports selfie and LA Live, a colorful entertainment complex next door. And of course, there's the original pantry in business since 1924, but in its current location since 1950. The pantry is known for huge portions, breakfast at any time, always a long line outside, and it's especially popular with the Staples crowd. And the Arts District is one of the up-and-coming sections of L.A., a former industrial center now home to hip art galleries, craft breweries, and trendy restaurants. Let's take a look around. Well, that was a busy two days, huh? I hope you enjoyed this photo walk at the city of Los Angeles and picked up some new things you hadn't seen before. Like L.A. traffic is a myth, right? We didn't see any of it. That's because we got out of the car and opened up our camera eyes, which is the whole point of the photo walk series, to enjoy the world, get out of the car, and see what's out there. L.A. in two days, however, was packed pretty tight. And while we saw many of her highlights, we did miss LACMA, the Getty, some of the cool neighborhoods like Silver Lake, the beach cities, Malibu, Manhattan, Redondo, and Hermosa. So do me a favor, please share some of your favorite photos of Los Angeles with me. I'd love to see what you come up with. Look for me on Twitter or Instagram where I'm at Jefferson Graham and let me know where we should bring the photo walk cameras next. I will see you on the next photo walk.